Hello my friends. We're here on an unusually hot day in May and now we're about to thin our oldest peach tree right now. The only one that's been uh, bearing. So I wanted to take you along and I guess show you a little bit about what we're doing. So come on in. Good. So pretty loaded with some peaches this year, which is nice. It's its first nice size crop. Last year we had a single peach, but it was the most delicious peach I've ever had. But there are way too many here. So uh, a few things that we're looking for in thinning is just to give each fruit ample size or ample space so it can size up and develop full flavors too. Um, you know, I would rather have 100 big, beautiful peaches with full flavor than 200 small peaches with no flavor. Uh, so that's why we thin. And I have a couple good candidates here on this little branch. We have one, two, three, four, five peaches. I'm going to knock that down to one. And obvious choices are small peaches that are right on top of each other. You just kind of roll them off like that or pinch them off. So these three get an immediate boot. And I'm left with two big ones. How do you decide which one to keep? Well, this one is another obvious one because if you come around to here, you can see that looks like plum uh, curculio has maybe damaged that fruit, laying some eggs in it or something chomped on it. Here, I'll pick it and get a better look. So even though that's the biggest one in the cluster, so those two little scars, um, there's something to look for. Just damaged ones will obviously get the boot. And now we're left with one big, beautiful peach on that little branch. And we're just gonna go down the line. Honestly, I'm not too scientific about it. I just do what feels right, pretty much in all of our homesteading endeavors. Some people say leave six inches of space between them or um, the size of your, the, the width of your hand but I just kind of go by what feels right. You can see, again, so up top here, one, two, three going around, four in the middle, five down bottom. Middle is little, gets the boot. Boot. Gets the boot. And I'm gonna go with that one up top because this one, uh, actually no, I'll do it at the bottom and get rid of this one. But just all throughout the tree looking for that nice, spacing and may your peaches be big beautiful and bountiful make sure you thin we're going to be doing our apples probably in about a week but honestly i do i think last year i did three rounds of those just because they're fully mature trees and they try to set over a thousand fruit so you have to be really diligent with picking them and then also with the cast offs um, you can collect them in a bucket i'm just going to put them in my pocket and throw them away just in case there are any eggs laid in there you want to break any sort of pest cycle you can so dispose of them and yeah peaches apples and pears but we predominantly thin here. Don't worry about it with cherries or any sort of berries or plums. You're a fool if you thin those because they are fine on their own. So peaches, apples, and plums. What about pears? All right, sorry, ap people's, peaches, people's. People's, people's <laughs> pears. Peaches, apples, and pears, not plums. So a few other reasons to thin that uh, I didn't mention earlier. I just mentioned for the sizing of the fruit and the flavor, but also the crop load management, especially with peaches. If it tries to set every single peach on the tree, you get a lot of limbs just snapping off. Uh, with apples, another thing is uh, it affects next year's bloom and next year's crop. So if it tries to set too many fruits, uh, 
it won't flower great next year because it puts so much energy into producing this mega crop. And then next year you have little crop. So it also balances that, that out so you get a, a good crop every year instead of great one, bad one, great one, bad one. And another thing with them being so close together is it provides such a, a great habitat for pests. I've noticed it a lot on the apples with uh, codling moth and apple maggots. I've seen it a lot on apple where they lay their eggs. Say these are two apples right in there and the larva can just tunnel right between the two. Uh, so that's another reason just to space the fruits out. You get airflow or if the rot fungus infects one apple it'll readily spread to the other apple but if they're spaced out you can pick them off before it becomes a problem. So this is just a little fraction of them as we've worked halfway around the tree and don't let it seem like you're taking off a lot of your crop because what's left behind will definitely be worth it. Trust me, you're like getting, getting rid of these will just benefit the rest of the crop hugely. Last year we took probably over a thousand apples off of two of our mature trees and still harvested um, probably just a few hundred from them. Just a very kind of often overlooked aspect of good fruit growing, but please thin these fruits if you want the best crop and enjoy. <laughs>